I was, I was freaking out about it a lot up front, but everyone's been like super helpful and it's been really collaborative. If you're a long-term Hearthstone fan like I am, right now you're probably reeling from the news that Blizzard is adding a 10th class to the game, the Demon Hunter. The hero that you never thought you'd see. This is huge stuff and really exciting. But how did the team tackle this project? What's involved in bringing a new class and a whole new identity to Hearthstone? And how did Team 5 take advantage of the fact that its new hero is Illidan, one of the most iconic Warcraft characters of all time? You're going to find out, because over the last seven months, iGen has been tracking the development of this project. And in this video, we're going to take a look at UI, storytelling, art, effects, and more, and how it all came together. This is the story of how Team 5 brought the Demon Hunter to life. Sometime last year, we decided, hey, what if, what if we created a 10th class and how <laughs> awesome would that be? Um, and I got really excited about it. I remember the design team sort of talking to each of us individually of like, hey, so I want to talk about this concept. What do you think about it? I thought, heck yeah, let's do it, right? And nothing better than the Demon Hunter to do that for. Yep. Um, sounds awesome. Uh, my job as a production director is to actually ship this stuff and so, I really started uh, in earnest, uh, what, like May, maybe? I feel like we started it after we shipped Rise of Shadows, yeah. somewhere around that time. Yeah. I mean, there was very early concept work, but generally like a lot of people starting to like ramp up and stuff. It's been, it's been a while now. Uh, and so, you know, we have a pretty long pipeline for ideating new cards, testing new mechanics, getting art uh, going. Um, and there's this general perception on the team of, oh my God, so much of the game is built around nine classes. We, mm -hmm. we have to go change quite a bit. So I uh, put a plan together for uh, making those changes uh, mm -hmm. to absorb the new class, looked at a bunch of UIs for 10 hero portraits, not just nine, yep. uh, in order to be uh, really confident in executing on all the supporting stuff outside of the gameplay that will really make the 10th class work. Yes, one of the foundational things that had to be changed was integrating 10 classes into Hearthstone's famously simple interface. So when exactly did the UI team become involved? UI, UI always come in first. Like we need to establish the flow, communicate with the design, make sure everybody understands what we're building. And um, after the first month or two of very heavy hands-on stuff, uh, so the team knows like what the exact plan is, we have the wireframe, we have prototype, uh, we have the initial concept, then we walk away, we move on to the next feature. UI comes on board so early that by the time of our first visit to Blizzard back in August of 2019, the team had already prototyped a wide variety of potential directions. All right, here are all the options. Obviously, we spent so much time thinking about, hey, what are the most creative way to solve this problem? We have gone as far as, like, as you can see, there's a cover flow or kind of like an old jukebox where Maybe there's some buttons you can click that sl like slide it one by slide one. Through. Yeah. And then we have like big hero art there and then the heroes are find out like cards. Super weird, but we just had to try it, you know. And then we have some reverse where you select hero from the, from the bottom and then you see the detail on top. Maybe this is a paragraph of description. Mm. Once the UI team agrees to, hey, these are our best options, we actually present it to the design team as a whole and says, hey guys, this is this is what we've been thinking about, and what, what do you guys think? Uh, do you any favorite ones? Any like least favorite ones? And that's where we narrow down to the highlighted one in green, and so we explore further down that path. And this is where we end up today, as of today. So as you can see, we went back to the hero portrait. You know, the art-shaped hero mm -hmm. portrait is a recognizable shape, and this art actual hero you collected in your collection manager. This is what it looks like on phone. Any design we do, in the back of our head while designing for PC version or phone version, whichever first we have to consider the other one as well. UI isn't the only department that spins up early. The production of art assets also spans almost the entirety of a set's development. So whether or not people know it, um, a lot of the in all of the in-game art, when you look at the cards themselves, the frames, the card backs, the boards, the user interface, the drawers, the box, all of that stuff is done in-house. But the card art itself, the illustrations that are on each and every card are all outsourced. Uh, some Blizzard artists do some here and there. Uh, everybody on the art team, on the Hearthstone team, tries to do at least one a set. 
uh, but by and large, the body of 135 cards are outsourced, and it's a, it's a worldwide vocation. So where was this process at back in August? We split it into waves because you're using a lot of the same artists a lot of the time, so they need time to do them. So we're about a wave to a wave and a half in right now. We're starting to get art back. Uh, we're seeing a lot of those sketches. We're seeing a lot of color finals here and there among the, the faster of the artists. And it's this point in time for the development team where they start to see those things. Design get, starts attaching them to cards right away. So you can start to make associations between that illustration on this card at a glance. I know what card just got played. Players do that all the time. But well, we do it when we're designing the game too. And you start to build this sense of like, oh, that card feels awesome now because we're starting to get the whole package. The art, the text, the numbers, everything is gelling and starting to come together. The person who manages the card art creation process is Jeremy Cranford. And like basically everyone I spoke to on this project, he was hugely excited at the prospect of bringing Demon Hunter into the game. My eyes just lit up. Um, you know, we hadn't got to dig into something like that since Knights of the Frozen Throne and doing Death Knights as a class. Um, not only you know, do the Demon Hunters have a, a fun, unique gameplay style, but they stand out in the set and it feels like something new. You know, it reminds me when we did um, Magnetic and it had that, in, that blue energy and that fell green you just noticed. You know, we did make sure you know, we have that fell green across all the Demon Hunters. And so when you play them, they feel special. I think that color's a nice hit. Um, and they're all, it's a fun part of the discovery. You know, I always think of card art as sort of um, archeological storytelling. You get all these bits and fragments and then you start to put the piece over. And so to me, that's sort of, um, as you build your collection, open packs, you get to discover more of the art, you know, and, and, and see uh, more characters and get deeper into the set. And, um, you know, I think people will really like it. The new class meant commissioning more than just art for cards, however. It also meant a new hero portrait. And so the team got in touch with Alex Hawley, the artist responsible for Illidan's existing art in the game and in the tutorial. Yeah, so Alex had done a great job with um, Illidan in the tutorial. And so right away we contacted him and um, we started brainstorming because if you look in the tutorial, you know, he's kind of growling and very aggressive. Behold the power of the demon within. And so like at first we we're playing, what if we went more stoic? You know, he's just like not afraid of anything and he's kind of standing there staring you down. Um, and so we went so far with that direction. With development, you know, sometimes we'll try things and then we'll pull back. And at the end we're like, you know, it's just not hitting where we wanted to. So we worked with Alex, he's like, all right, let's do something more aggressive, you know, and, and uh, a little bit more um, angles and dynamic. And so we ended up doing a second one before we really felt we got it right. But uh, I think it was worth the time and effort and exploration. Yes, that's right. A new piece of Illidan Hero Art was basically done before the team decided to go back to the drawing board. This is a team that's obsessed with getting it right, but interestingly enough, they also want to let individuality shine. I thought, for instance, that Jeremy would probably give a whole lot of detail and direction in his card art briefs for their pool of artists, but that's just not the case. We always found less is more, right? Um, because the more we allow the artists to include themselves, the better the image is going to be. So what I always found is what is the essentials? And the other phrase I'll, I'll use is like, let's not see the mechanic in the art brief. So don't be so literal, you know, so let's be a little bit more poetic. Um, and we get, we get better art. So, you know, you, you need to know who the character is. You need to know the location. I always like to know the mood, right? Is this aggressive mood? Is this a threatening image? You know, and also the class is important. Is this a warlock? Is it, you know, doing a summoning spell? Is this, you know, a heroic image, right? Is it a paladin at the moment, you know, he's calling down the light, you know? And already you can just feel that energy. And so that's the sort of stuff we need. And then if the mechanics, you know, the car bumps from a 2-4 to a 3-4 or it had divine shield and it doesn't, because we're working simultaneously, um, we try to get the best image, you know, but allow that flexibility, sort of balancing the two things. What we always try to do is leave room for the next person, right? So as design comes up with the kit and the character briefs, leave some room, you know, start outsourcing, can add to it and plus it, right? And so I always think we'll leave some room for the illustrators to plus it. And they're even saying, hey, here's some ideas to let the, um, the uh, effects and golden team plus it. And oh, here's some cool things the audio can do. You know, so everyone, I think you always want to leave a gap for everyone to um, own and add to it. It just, you see um, the collective, I think is so much better than just one brief that doesn't leave room for anyone, right? As Jeremy just pointed out, card art is only one facet of production. Another critical department is VFX, who so are tasked with carving out a unique identity for the Demon Hunter. We've already gotten nine classes that we know what they, we know what they look like, we know what they feel like, we know what they play like, we know what the fantasy is. And so finding 
like this cool, unique wedge for Demon Hunter in there was um, just this really, really fun challenge, especially because Demon Hunter uh, shares a lot uh, visually with the magic of a lot of our existing classes. There's a lot of stuff visually that they have in common with Warlock because they're do both dealing with a lot of fell and demons. There's a lot that they have in common with Rogue with all of the like, all of the weapons, all of the acrobatics, stuff like that. I was looking at a lot of the stuff that WoW has already done for them because they're, they are very good. <laughs> um, and just sort of borrowing from that and then taking all of these really cool things. They have, they have a lot of black. They have a lot of this really cool gradient from like these dark, rich teals up through this like, you know, these pops of that like yellow green fell. Taking that and kind of bringing it into more of the Hearthstone style where it's, uh, it's, it's keeps kind of that like chaotic, jagged edge to it, but it's also uh, much, much more simplified and so that it meshes well with the rest of the stuff that we already have in the game. Even though they share a lot in common, like damage-wise with like Warlock or Rogue, they do it with very, very different tools. So yes, they have all of the spell energy, but you know, it's in eye beams, it's in these shockwave blasts, it's very, very different shapes, even if the source and the palette are the same. Uh, so trying to really hone in on that to kind of give it something unique compared to Warlock. And then on the rogue side, really focusing on like, you know, the war glaives and rogue has these very like precise sort of slice, mo uh, slice motions. Theirs are much broader, they're much more chaotic. They're a little bit more like ragged and aggressive and stuff like that. So kind of uh, playing up those differences in the weapons and the kinds of like damage and attacks that you can deal with those weapons. So uh, yeah, that's been, that's been a lot of it. It's been really, really fun. <laughs> and leading the demon hunters into battle is Illidan himself. For, for me, um, you know, this is a character that I've grown up with and known and love. Like, I mean, um, you know, my first experience with Illidan is in Warcraft 3. Um, he's a super iconic character. He's very, um, you know, he, there's good elements and bad elements to him. He's very much a story of redemption. Um, and he's just, he's super interesting. There's, there's so much depth to his character and, um, and his motivations and backstory. For me, it's just, I think it's just super awesome to be able to work with a, a character like this that, I, that has been, you know, had impact on my life and been a big part of my gaming history growing up. The team's also huge fans, of course, of yep. Warcraft lore. Uh, and so they were super excited to bring Illidan uh, into the uh, mix for Hearthstone. Yep. Uh, I remember the team meeting where we sort of announced we're doing this. Uh, we bought a bunch of blindfolds uh, and the presenters uh, got up with some yep. fake warglaves, of course, fake warglaves, uh, and blindfolds and sort of talked to the team about uh, yep. bringing the class in. And that, was, that felt really cool for the team. Uh, to sort of partake in the, yeah, we're going to go do this and everyone's going to be a demon hunter. It's going to be great. Yep. And Chad R. Set lead on this expansion, he worked on Legion in World of Warcraft as well. So he worked heavily on that expansion and uh, obviously a lot of that knowledge and a lot of that like, passion has really translated to the set as well, which is, you know, which is super cool. That's a lot of Warcraft history coming to Hearthstone and a really unique opportunity for the team. Our Hearthstone players may or may not be familiar with Illidan yet, so it's an opportunity to kind of reintroduce this, this amazing Warcraft character uh, to, to the Hearthstone audience. Um, and in addition, there's, there's things that uh, just weren't necessarily portrayed in any of the games. They were portrayed in the novels. Uh, and so we had the opportunity there to kind of tell Illidan's, Illidan's story, kind of give people what I would say is the full Illidan experience of who this character is, what they're about, and kind of give give Illidan a, a story arc throughout the expansion and the, uh, the single player to come uh, a couple months later. There's some stuff that's only like in game manuals for like Warcraft 3 and stuff. Yeah. I'm really excited to, to bring that into an in-game experience so that people can interact with it more clearly. So what are the crucial elements of Illidan's long and complicated backstory that need to be included? There's just certain kind of like critical parts of Illidan's character that you want to get in. Uh, you know, his people call him the betrayer. Why do they call him the betrayer? And how does he feel about that? Because he's pretty surly about it. And actually that's kind of the, the heart of who Illidan is. He felt, feels like he stepped up and did what he needed to do. 
and everybody else, you know, recoiled in fear of, of what he had become. And uh, I think that's the heart of, of who Illidan is. And so we need to get that across. Like that's like one of the most important things. You know? Yeah, and generally when going through his history, I wanted to find the most interesting parts, right? Mm -hmm. To let players experience them firsthand, like when he gets uh, to fight the demon Azanoth, who has the famous war glaives of Azanoth. You get to understand like, oh, that's where they came from. That's why I want them. <laughs> They're so shiny. Uh, and, you know, also to show the moments with his brother firsthand. His brother is Malfurion Stormrage, our main druid character in Hearthstone. So uh, when you experience that from Illidan's perspective this time, because we're all, we're seeing everything through his lens, you're like, oh yeah, that guy sure is mean to me. Like, <laughs> I am the cooler brother, come on. I hardly even need your help, brother. So obviously the team are having some fun with Illidan, but it actually took a while to settle on the right tone. I thought initially that we were going to go quite a bit more lighthearted with it because, you know, that's the Hearthstone feeling, but as everyone um, pitched in and brought their part, especially Liam, the voice actor, uh, his understanding of who Illidan was was actually quite serious and, and quite moving in how, uh, you know, honest he was in his portrayal of the character and how much respect he had for the character. You are not prepared! And so there were a few places where I was like, oh yeah, this, this is maybe a little too far. Um, and working with Liam, we were able to get it in that place where it felt like Illidan to everyone. I learned the ways of the demons and gained their trust. So it is still from Illidan's perspective, which is slanted, obviously, as everyone has their own perspective. Yeah, you can, have, you can find some of the humor yeah. from that. Like, just yeah. Illidan's perspective of events is different than how everyone else sees it. Yeah. So that's fun. Yeah. And there are definitely funny moments, but it is kind of this classic story of someone finding who they are, you know? I think a lot of people can relate to the feeling of growing up and being told you have a lot of potential, mm -hmm. but how do you use that? So there is, at, at the core, like quite a serious story, but, you know, we, we do have fun with it in places. All aboard the SS Betrayer to sail the seas of treachery. What just happened? <laughs> I think I just blacked out. The reveal cinematic is our first introduction to Illidan's perspective. Finding the right approach for that took time too. We needed something that would be, you know, big, appropriately epic and just sort of capture the, the mood and, uh, and sort of most importantly, take this character Illidan and sort of lift him up and elevate him into the, the pantheon of other Hearthstone heroes. And I think we even used the word pantheon when we were talking about it and that sort of started to inspire an idea. It was, it was really challenging, I think, in, in that, like, because Illidan is one of our most iconic characters, mm -hmm. you know, for, mm -hmm. Blizzard. Um, as soon as you see his silhouette, you know who it is. As soon as yeah. you hear his voice, you know who it is. Behold the power of the demon within! And so we were like, well, how do we, maybe we just lean into the punch, you know, like mm -hmm. maybe we let you know who it is, but because we've never released a new hero mm -hmm. class, mm -hmm. The fans will just assume, oh, it's the next expansion. We're mm -hmm. going to yeah. Outland or something. Yeah, he's going to be the villain that we're fighting. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. They yeah. wouldn't expect it to be. And so it's just mm -hmm. like, yeah, let's just lean into that. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, you realize, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, what? Yeah. And yeah, then it's so just the, mic dropped out and just, you know, let yeah, people's the, imagination. The big reveal that he's yeah. the hero. So Hearthstone has a 10th class and a new hero. Over the last seven months, I've seen just how many different disciplines have been laboring day and night to bring Demon Hunter to life. And you know what the really crazy thing is? This is just one part of Team 5's plans for Year of the Phoenix. This is probably the biggest initiative, biggest set of content features we've tried to launch simultaneously in the history of the game. Um, yep. Just so much has been done to make this the best time to get back into Hearthstone, again with the making it easier to get into the game, cool new content uh, from the Demon Hunter, the changes to the rank system. Uh, it's really taken the team pushing hard to uh, successfully develop and deliver uh, and launch that experience. Uh, and so that's been a very rewarding uh, experience over the last year. 
we want Hearthstone to be somewhere you can come and play and play kind of whatever you want and have fun and hopefully there'll generally always be something new going on. And what does this mean for the future of Hearthstone? Like with Battlegrounds, actually, um, one of the things uh, you know the team I think is taking away is, hey, we we can do more. Uh, we can try to you know, aggressively develop and launch a new mode, and we can try to aggressively develop and launch a new class uh, and learn how to uh, do that sustainably and better each time. And so, uh, I think the sort of cadence of figuring out how to get more content, more modes, more mm -hmm. stuff for players uh, into Hearthstone uh, is you know, building momentum to continue to see more coming forward. Uh, and we're not talking about all that stuff now, but like, I'm really excited about other stuff we've got in the queue. Yep. It is just the team getting better uh, and um, uh, leveling up to deliver more for players. If you enjoyed this video, stay tuned, because once all the cards have been revealed, we're going to be publishing an in-depth look at how Demon Hunter was designed, the story behind the hero power, the mechanics, and a whole lot more. For now, check out the reveal cinematic, and for everything else, stick to IGN.